Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the um, University of Ottawa in the Department of Geography, uh, the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And um, what I'm going to discuss here is the Arctic uh, blowtorch uh, pulling apart and destroying um, the sea ice. Um, so what I'm showing here, oh, first of all, I'm going to get the lights because that will increase the contrast of these images. Low budget, um, low budget uh, filming, um, which reminds me, I have a new website, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, if you'd like to see improved uh, technical quality of these videos or to support my research, um, I have zero funding basically for all of these videos that I put together, and I'm trying to educate the world on the enormous risks that I see occurring um, from abrupt climate change. So please consider uh, supporting me. I have thousands of people watching these videos. Uh, you know, five or ten bucks from, from each person would, would allow me to go a long way in producing many more of these videos. So what we have here is we have a polar view of the Arctic. So we have Greenland here, we have Northern Canada here, we have Alaska, the Bering Strait comes through here from the Pacific Ocean, and uh, Asia here, and Europe, of course, is over here. So we have the Nair Strait carrying water down here, we have the Fram Strait coming down between Svalbard and Greenland, and um, what you can see, um, what happened um, at the, around New Year's is there was an incursion of very warm air up into the Arctic and it brought the North Pole above zero degrees Celsius. So what we're seeing here is this is a temperature and this is cycling through from today out one week forward according to the global forecast system model, the US climate model. And the temperature here, so above zero is greens, below zero is the blues and purples. Um, the temperature at the North Pole should be roughly minus 40 degrees Celsius, um, which is about, which is the same as minus 40 Fahrenheit. But what we're seeing is we're seeing these large temperature anomalies. So this is the temperature difference between what is occurring now and what we would get in the long term uh, baseline for this particular day. So what you can see is you can see this incursion a very warm air. This is above zero coming far up into the Arctic. Um, and we're also seeing it here. So this is over the next several days. We're seeing this massive warm air, 20 degrees Celsius at least above, above normal, um, or 36 Fahrenheit above normal. And you can see that the whole Arctic region is two and a half, approaching three degrees Celsius above normal. Um, the, no the whole northern hemisphere is much above average as well. Um, so these are synchronized, um, so they're going at the same time. Um, and what you can see is this, this warm air moving up and circling, you know, it's covering, the, you know, almost over half of the Arctic basin. So of course, uh, this very, these very warm temperatures have a huge impact on sea ice. The sea ice is supposed to be um, remember, we're, we have 24 hours of darkness right now over the Arctic, and we're seeing incursions of, of warm air moving up. Um, if you've watched previous videos of mine and other people, you'll realize that we, the whole climate system is destabilizing. We're, uh, we've lost so much Arctic sea ice, and the snow cover is down. Um, they're both dropping exponentially, so the Arctic is getting much darker. In fact, it darkened, um, the, the overall Arctic averaged a reflectivity from, of sunlight of 52%, and that dropped to 48% in the space of a decade or so, according to NAD, NASA data from the series CERES instrumentation. Um, so what um, happens is because the Arctic is darker and warming much faster, the heat balance is thrown off with the rest of the planet, um, specifically with the equator. So the jet streams move slower and become wavier. So this is a jet stream pattern um, right now, and it's synchronized to this. So what you can see is, you can see these incursions of air this way, 
Um, and this is what we're getting here with this um, very warm air. And it's also, not only is it very warm, but it contains a lot of water vapor. So it's bringing that water vapor and all that, which is carrying all that latent heat content up into the Arctic. Meanwhile, we're seeing uh, cold areas of Arctic air coming south. So the, the net effect is we're, we're getting an equalization of temperature in the Northern Hemisphere, a very rapid equalization of temperature with latitude. And where this is going is, this is going to an Arctic with no sea ice um, at the end of the summer and very little snow cover. And then once that happens, the feedbacks will kick in even more with the methane coming up in the Arctic and also the continuing darkening of the Arctic. Um, and we're going to um, an Arctic eventually that will be warm year round. This is, this is where we're heading. I'm not saying we have to head there. Um, if you've seen previous videos where I talk about the need to zero fossil fuel emissions, uh, cool the Arctic to prevent the methane coming up and try to restore the jet streams and removing CO2 from the atmosphere. Um, so now what I'll show you is, uh, this is a, if you sort of expand out this view and no longer look just coming down at the North Pole, if you look at the overall Northern Hemisphere, you can see these very, very warm temperatures in the Arctic. Um, and you can see um, the extent of the temperature anomalies. And this is no longer an unusual situation. This has become more or less the norm in the last uh, several years as we transition through abrupt climate change to a much warmer, warmer planet. Um, what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere? Um, this is a view of the, what's going on in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, there's not as much activity. You see some very cold spots, warm, colder than normal, some warm spots. You see some fluctuation. Um, every, this is cycling through at a three hour interval. Um, so you can see some things going on here, um, but the, because of the vast oceans in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, that tends to moderate uh, some of these effects. So what I want to show next is, this is, uh, so this is just North America um, from where we are now, uh, looking further out. So you can see that the, the coast, the eastern coast of the U.S., where we've had this massive snow dump, um, is, is a bit, was a bit colder than normal and then is warming up as this, as this um, area, region of 20 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal air comes through. So we're going to get tremendous amounts of flooding over the next uh, three days or so as three feet of snow starts to melt very, very rapidly um, as this band moves through and it's going to be followed by this band. Um, so what, um, had, what, what was really the cause of that massive snowstorm? See, when this band comes through, any snow, I mean, we're going to lose all the snow on the eastern uh, seaboard probably over the next week or so, you know, as this really warm air comes through, that snow doesn't have a chance. So think of all the flooding that's going to occur in that region over the next week or so. It's going to be pretty miserable there. Um, so what I want to show now is, um, this is the Arctic sea ice extent over time. So here we are. Um, this is uh, data from yesterday, as it updated up to yesterday, I believe. Yes, 23rd of January. So what we had here is, this is the, the average sea ice extent from 81 to 2010, over 30 years. Um, this is plus or minus two standard deviations, is the gray shaded area. We've been tracking along the bottom. This is the area of minimum sea ice, the 2011 to 2012 year. Um, so there are fluctuations you can see. Now what happened here, yeah. okay. What happened here is the, this is where we had that anomaly go through, the really warm temperatures on uh, New Year's Day um, up in the Arctic, the excursion above zero degrees at the North Pole. 
So over the next week after that, the ice stopped growing pretty much and dipped well below the two sigma uh, uh, line. And then it started to recover a bit. And now it's up to here. And now we're getting another excursion coming in. So you would expect this to flatten out and uh, do the same thing. Okay, so I would expect this line to start going horizontal or maybe even dip down over the next week and then hopefully recover back up until we have the next uh, excursion. And what we have, okay, so that's the sea ice. And uh, what we have now, I'm showing the ice thickness um, over time. So this is over, this data, I've got it set to cycle over a year. So zero sea ice, five meters of sea ice is the black, the red is four to four and a half meters, the green, two and a half to three meters or so, three and a half meters. You know, these blues, most of the ice is, you know, one and a half, is about two meters thick. Um, this is new ice that is growing in the winter. Um, so we're at December here, 2015. We're just at, in this year now. So this is where we are this year. And when it jumps, it jumps to a year ago. And you can see the ice uh, thickness, the only thick ice is here. Now, there's almost no multi-year ice. Multi-year ice is ice that's two years or older. It's the thicker ice. The ice is ridged up to five meters because it's pushed there. It's not, it's not thick ice. Um, it's just ridged ice. It's very young ice. So it's got a lot of salt in it. It's, very, it's not very strong. And you can see this is in the summer of last year. Um, you can see that the thick ice almost completely vanishes um, and there's very little thick ice left when the ice starts to reform. Um, now what I'll show you is a couple other images here. Okay, so what we have here, actually I'll go back to here. So what we have here is, this is the motion of the ice in terms of, the scale is, is up to 30 centimeters a second. Okay, so the wind and the ocean currents are pushing the ice. The ice is always moving, and this is cycling through very quickly over a full year. And what you can see is these circular patterns of red coming through. So that's where there's a low pressure area or a storm coming over the ice. The low pressure pulls in air from around it because of the Coriolis is deflected right, and you get this uh, cyclone motion here, and then you get trans, uh, content, trans Arctic drift. So what you can see here is you can see lots of ice being exported between Greenland and, and uh, Svalbard. Um, and because the weather patterns change throughout the uh, winter, you know, and summer, and you get these different storms coming through, some covering the entire basin, the ice does have some fluctuation year to year. But eventually the ice will get thin enough that it completely is no longer in the basin. The basin is completely open seawater. And I expect that to happen uh, by 2020, probably even earlier than that. And then the extreme weather events that we see around the planet will, will be larger by probably an order of magnitude, 10 or 20 times. Uh, and this is a big concern. This is going to be a huge economic cost to societies um, and to people. Um, so what I want to show you lastly here is um, this is showing the um, sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, so what you can see is you can see the Gulf Stream is, come, this is from Earth Null School, you can see the Gulf Stream is bringing very warm water up here. Um, it's just reboot, re, re, refreshing. Very warm water up here. Um, there's a cold pool of water which is um, due to uh, fresh water due to melting, high, high melting off Greenland, and that water is coming in. Also the water, the sea ice that's being pushed out and melting is cooling the water here. Um, and you can see large temperature contrast, which causes very large winds. So that when these jet streams sweep across, they're driving all of these storms into the UK. But what happened recently is the, weather, the storm that came up and it picked up all this moisture and uh, so this water vapor came up into the atmosphere and then it went over uh, the eastern coast of the U.S. and dumped three feet of snow and it's pretty much paralyzed the eastern seaboard of the U.S. So you really need to consider the climate system changes. All weather is happening now under a different climate system.